Hello, and welcome to the Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that was always a bit more George F. Kennan than Paul Nitz. My name is Cody, and you know, here at the Discriminating Gamer, we love those hidden traitor games. Games like Battlestar Galactica, the board game, Dead of Winter, Shadows Over Camelot. But you know, all of those games, fun as they are, they're cooperative games with a hidden traitor. Today, we're going to take a look at a competitive game with a hidden traitor mechanic. I am, of course, talking about Homeland, the game from Gale Force 9. Homeland, the game, Gale Force 9, is based on the Showtime TV series, which stars Damian Lewis and Claire Danes. It's essentially about a CIA agent who is convinced that a returning prisoner of war from Iraq has been turned by Al-Qaeda, and he's secretly working for the terrorists, and she's trying to prove this. And the fact of the matter is, over the course of the series, you're not really sure whose allegiance is to whom. Very, very interesting TV show. Is the game as interesting? Well, let me explain it to you. In Homeland the Game, three to six players essentially take on the roles of CIA agents. And they're going to ostensibly all work together to thwart terrorist plots against the United States. Here's the thing, though. They each have a hidden agenda. In fact, there are three different kinds of hidden agendas. Now, the first hidden agenda are loyal agents of the CIA. Now, their job and how they're going to win is to just thwart as many terrorist plots as possible. The more terrorist plots they thwart, the better off they're going to be and more likely that they will win the game. Then you have political opportunists. And political opportunists are these fellows who can gain certain credibility, certain tokens that kind of enhance their stature and can be used for victory points at the end of the game if a number of terrorist plots go off. But at the same time, they can't let the terrorists win the game. So it's a delicate balance the way they're playing. They want the terrorists to win some of the time, but not all of the time. Finally, there's a terrorist mole, and he or she absolutely wants the terrorists to win the game. They want as many of the plots to succeed as possible so that the terrorists can win against the CIA. Now, the game board is essentially a grid. It's a grid that features different uh, priority levels of threats. You have a low priority and you have an imminent priority. And these threats are going to be moving up the track, and once they hit the imminent, they're going to be uh, analyzed to see whether or not they are successful. There's also two tracks on the side of the board, an agency track and a terrorist track. If ever the terrorists win, then they're going to advance the terrorist track a number of tokens. If the agency wins, they'll advance the agency a number of tokens. Now, whichever side gets to the end of the track first is going to determine possibly who the winner is. If the terrorist fills up the terrorist track, terrorist wins. Game over, right? He wins. But if the agents and the political opportunists are able to fill up the agency track, then we're going to kind of go to a, another whole end game to see who the winner is going to be. Now, the number of the kinds of cards in the agenda deck that are then passed out that assign people their hidden agendas, that is based on the number of players. Now, it's possible you can play this game and nobody's the terrorist. They're going to start building threats on the board immediately. And what that means is you're going to take a plot card and an organization card, and you're going to have incomplete information. You're only going to see some of it. You're going to see the impact, meaning if this threat succeeds, the terrorists are going to get that many tokens on their track, or if it's thwarted, the agency will get that many tokens on their track. There's also a sophistication level. Now, this is one visible red number that tells you how sophisticated this plot is, and that's going to be very important, as we will see. Now, also, you're going to put a random intel card down on each of these new threats. Now, in addition to your hidden agenda card, you're also going to get three intel cards. And these intel cards are going to be very important during the course of the game. 
Now, on your turn, you actually take a case lead card. That's essentially your color, and you place it on one of the threats. Now, some of the threats, too, will have some rewards, some possible rewards if it's thwarted. You may want to look at that. You may want to go after some of the, the, the ones that look the most dangerous in order to stop them. But you're each going to go, and you're going to select a, a different case to be working on, a different threat to try to be working on. Then you're going to place two of your intel cards, and they can't be on the same two threats, and you can't place the first one on your threat. So you have to select somebody else's to place an intel card on, and then you place one on your own card. And here's what the intel cards do. Most of them have numbers on them. They either have a blue number, which is good for the intel, or they have a red number, which is good for the terrorists. So you're going to be piling these things on, and different people are going to be putting different cards, hidden intel cards, under each of the case lead cards. And as the various threats advance toward imminent, they're going to be get more cards piled on them. But during the course of your turn, you may have some other uh, things come up. Now, when, when, when some of the, the terrorist plots come out, if the terrorists win, everybody's going to get political uh, clout tokens. And these political clout tokens are, are very helpful because they're going to uh, help the political opportunists. Sometimes when the plots are thwarted, you may get agency tokens, which are good for loyal agents. And you can also discard one of your intel cards, and it may have some tokens on it that then you can collect. And with these tokens, you can actually buy asset cards. Now, asset cards are very cool, because asset cards are your special abilities. These are things that allow you to have exceptions to rules, maybe give you, you know, helpful moments, helpful things you can do over the course of the game. You can also recruit agents, which let you look at the plot card, or you can recruit soldiers, which let you look at some of the intel cards, though you have to mix in a new intel card that you don't know what it is. So they let you look at the cards. They can also be used for other things, uh, as we will see. For instance, if you've got two soldiers on a card, uh, if you have a, an asset card that has a drone strike, you can just remove that threat, take it off the board, it's gone. Now, one of the most important facets of the game is analyzing those threats. So what you're going to do is the active player is going to take the uh, threat off the imminent track, and they're going to flip them over on the threat analysis. So you're going to see the plot and the organization card. You're going to put them together, and it's going to tell you the numbers you have to beat, because there's a sophistication number you knew about, but there's also going to be another number on the other card that's also going to to tell you kind of your target number. So that's the number you have to beat. How do you beat them? With the intel cards. Essentially, you shuffle the intel cards and then you flip them over. And if the red numbers on the intel cards and what's on the threat cards, if that is equal to or greater than the blue cards, the terrorists win. But if the blue cards add up to more, then it is the agents that win that threat. Now, you can also put the little agent figures uh, on various threats, and that will add as another uh, blue number, so that will kind of help out that way as well. Now, the game ends when all of the sides of the track are full. If it's a terrorist track, terrorist automatically wins. That's it. If it is the agencies that, that gets there, if, if a number of, of threats have been thwarted and the agency track gets all the way up, then either the loyal agents or the political opportunists are likely to win, though it is still possible for the terrorists to win. Essentially, what you can do is guess at who the terrorist is. Now, everybody deals out their own colored uh, case file card, their case lead card, and then you can essentially vote by using that color on who you think that the terrorist was. If you guess right, you get extra points. If you guess wrong, you get a point penalty. Then what you're going to do is add up the number of tokens depending on what your agenda was. If you were a loyal agent, then if you have the agency tokens, if you have the most agency tokens, and some of the asset cards are going to give you points as well, if you have the most points, you win the game. If you were a political opportunist and you have the most political clout tokens, and again, your asset card victory points, then you are going to win the game. Now, if during that part where you're accusing the terrorists, if the actual terrorist, if he doesn't get accused, then he is kind of flown under the radar, and he wins the game. So that is just a very, very basic uh, overview of the rules. There's, there's quite a bit more to it, but that's just it in a nutshell. Now, i got to tell you, prior to the first time I played this game, myself and nobody else at the table had seen the TV show Homeland. Heard about it, heard it was good, but none of us had seen it. So a lot of us were kind of skeptical. You know, we didn't know if it would be uh, really that good because we didn't know if the TV show was that good. Now, i got to tell you, I was very optimistic because I'm a huge fan of Gale Force 9. As you can see, uh, Firefly and Sons of Anarchy. I thought those were both fantastic games. So I was willing to give Gale Force 9 the benefit of the doubt, and I really wanted to see how this game played. I was also intrigued by the idea of the uh, hidden traitor game that wasn't cooperative. I thought that was a very, very interesting thing, and I wanted to see how the game made that work. 
Essentially, what this game does is it takes the crisis card mechanic from games like Battlestar Galactica and Dead of Winter, and it makes the whole game around that. I mean, that's essentially what each of the threats are, are crises, crises that you have to try to manage by playing secret cards. So in that sense, it takes one of the best mechanics from one of the best games, and it uses that to, to, to facilitate an entirely new uh, system. And it works. That is very, very fun. I really like that. It is very uh, nail-biting. It's also very hard if you're not the terrorist. Um, terrorist, I think, probably has a slight advantage in this game. Uh, in fact, I, the game, it's possible that nobody has the terrorist card. Nobody gets that agenda. You know, you're all political opportunists or all loyalists, and the terrorists still win because it can be, it, just the game is heading in that direction. You really have to work to prevent a terrorist victory. It's a lot harder if somebody's actively sabotaging uh, your attempts there. But the game also succeeds in, in creating that sense of paranoia and really wondering who the traitor is. And it's, it's scary. And, but, but what's fun about this, though, is you even as you are all working together to try to kind of figure out who the traitor is and making the accusations, which is always a great part of hidden traitor games, you're looking out for number one. You're always aware, okay, this isn't just about defeating the bad guys. This is about putting me on top. And that's an interesting aspect, too, because it requires all the players to have a very delicate balancing act. The political opportunist role is probably the most difficult because they want to get those political clout tokens that come with terrorist victories, but at the same time, you can't do too many of them because the terrorists will win. The asset cards, too, are really cool because it, they provide some of those fun things. Like I said, the drone strikes are a really cool element, and I, I, I really like how some of the cards that you put in front of you can either have negative points or positive points. They can have red numbers or blue numbers, uh, depending on how they're used, which means if you've got one of these cards in front of you, you can be kind of, and you're the terrorist, you can be kind of very subtle and look like you're helping, but then when that critical card is up there, you can just say, okay, I'm going to burn this card, get rid of it, and use the red number, I win the game. And so there's a real danger when you see other people on the board and they've got those cards that have both blue and red numbers on it, because like, if it's their traitor, we can't get that close. It's kind of like in, in Shadows Over Camelot, when you're starting to get really close to uh, having the number of catapults out there, and you say, we've got to scale back from the catapults, right? We've we, we, we got to work on the catapults. Um, it, it's that same kind of fear and frustration that comes in this game, and that is very fun. All told, I was very impressed with Homeland. I thought it was a lot of fun. I've watched the first uh, season of Homeland since I've started playing this game. And I don't know that... that it, it, I wouldn't necessarily call this game a highly thematic game, but certainly there is there is a lot that draws you in. A lot of, there's a lot of photographs rather than, than artwork directly from the TV series, and that does succeed generally in dragging you into the game. Even if it isn't really terribly thematic with a lot of the character dynamics of the TV show, it still succeeds uh, you know, in, in kind of drawing you in in that idea of CIA versus terrorists. So I really enjoyed Homeland. I, I think it's a winner. I think it's a very fun game. Uh, I don't think I, I don't I enjoy it quite as much as some of those other Gale Force 9 games like Sons of Anarchy, like Firefly, but I did enjoy this. I, I really got a kick out of it, and if you like Hidden Trader games, and, and you like Hidden Trader games, but maybe you want a new spin on it where it's not cooperative, but it is competitive, I think you really need to check out Homeland. I think it does what it does very, very well, and I really, really had a good time with this game. So the recommendation for the Discriminating Gamer for Homeland the Game is buy it. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us here on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook and subscribe to us on YouTube. We are The Discriminating Gamer. And I'll tell <coughs> Yes, Mr. President? Terrorist? <laughs> Not on my watch. Please somebody help me on my feet again. Have you seen a boy around here, a lad? But there's time for his beating. Well, what did he do? Oh, I, I don't know. You know, it's just time. <laughs>